Well, good morning. And thank you for being here on the last day of the year. Amen. Uh, it's been a good year. 2023 has been a good year. We pray that the Lord will uh, bless us and lead us into the coming year. and We'll have such a good year. Uh, who knows? Could be the year when the Lord comes, 2024. We never know. Amen. I'm going to uh, actually read uh, one passage from the Old Testament and one from the New. So if you want to find your place, I'm going to read one uh, verse of Scripture from the book of Joshua, chapter number 3. Uh, and that will be page 261, if you have the old Schofield. Joshua, chapter number 3. And then I want to read a verse out of uh, Revelation chapter 21. And that may sound like a strange combination, uh, but I think you'll figure it out uh, once uh, we get going. Revelation chapter 21, and that's page 1351, if you have the old Schofield. Joshua chapter 3, Revelation chapter 21. Uh, thank you for being here uh, as always. Thank to the folks who will join us by way of uh, the front row and uh, we'll try to uh, incorporate hopefully uh, maybe some changes in the coming year. I know some folks have asked to see a little more of the service, maybe some of the singing or whatnot. Uh, we'll try to work on that, see what we can get done. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll uh, try to incorporate that uh, so you can uh, see a little bit more of the service. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for that, and hope it's a blessing uh, to you. Amen. All right. Um, uh, let's uh, uh, read a verse of Scripture, and, and maybe after the message this morning, since today's the last day of the year, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll ask folks, those that would like to join us, and we'll come up around the altar and uh, have a word of prayer and thank God for this year and pray for his guidance in the coming year. You know, we used to have the old time services where, you know, we'd have watch night service and at midnight everybody would gather around the altar and we'd pray out the old and pray in the new. Uh, and I, I'm not aware really of uh, watch night services anymore. Uh, seems to be a thing of the past, but uh, uh, we can still pray. Amen. So maybe this morning we'll ask you, if you those that want to, and if, if you can't make it up here, uh, you can sit right where you're at. That's fine too. Amen. Uh, but we'd like to have a, a prayer and ask the Lord to bless us uh, in the coming year. All right, Joshua chapter 3. And uh, if you uh, have the old Schofield Bible, page 261, uh, let's look at verse 3. And they commanded the people, saying, When ye shall see the ark of the covenant, of the Lord your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. And yet there shall be space between you, 2,000 cubits. Uh, and that'd be about 3,000 feet. Uh, just, uh, you know, maybe what, three quarters of a mile. 2,000 cubits by measure, come not near unto it that ye may know uh, the way by which ye must go. For you have not passed this way heretofore. Amen. You have not passed this way heretofore. Now, read with me in Revelation chapter 21, page 1351 in the old Schofield, uh, verse number one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And I like this verse. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there, there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we do thank you for your blessings. Thank you for these that have come this way today. And uh, some couldn't be with us, and I pray for them. Lord, you know where they are. They may be hindered or uh, they may be sick. I pray that you might uh, bring your blessings into their life. You uh, know, Father, uh, all things. I pray, God, as we leave this year and enter the coming year, that you'd help us to do your will. I pray, Father, that you might bless the message, touch hearts today. If there's one, Lord, that needs a special touch, lift them up. If there's one that uh, maybe is uh, lost today, speak to their heart that they may see their need of a Savior and be saved before it's too late. In Christ's name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Amen. I read these two passages uh, uh, because I want to get an idea of where we stand today. Uh, Joshua chapter 3, uh, the people there on the, the precipice, if you will, they are about to enter uh, the promised land. They're going to cross Jordan. Now, some people think about crossing Jordan, and they think that symbolizes uh, death. Um, but really, uh, it's not so much about death, but it's about entering the promised land. Notwithstanding, it took them 40 years to get there because of disobedience and murmuring and so on. Uh, but they were on the edge of the promised land. They finally had arrived. Now, keep this in mind. Since they came out of Egypt, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness... And the Bible said their shoes had not worn out. They had the same shoes they had when they left Egypt. Imagine that. Well, that put the shoe company out of business, wasn't it? Uh, their, their clothes hadn't worn out. They, uh, they were still in good shape. Uh, a lot of the folks who had murmured and complained had died along the way. Uh, uh, but they still had uh, Joshua and they still had Caleb. Moses even had died. Um, because God said uh, he was not allowed to go into the promised land. Imagine that. Moses, the man of God who led the people out, and yet God said you can't go in uh, because he disobeyed God in striking uh, the rock when God said to speak to the rock. Uh, God let him see it, though. Took him up on the mountain, showed him that place, but he never got to, to go in. Uh, but listen, Moses is not done yet. Uh, Jesus, the Bible said, was pictured uh, with Moses on the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, uh, they talked with him about the work they had to do. So he'll be back. He, he's coming. He'll be back. But, uh, but listen, he, he said something very, uh, uh, you know, uh, instrumental here. He said, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And, and here in the closing day of 2023... Uh, we are on the precipice, the entrance to a place that we have never been before. 2024, God willing, is coming. And then I went to the New Testament where the Bible said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Now this is in the future, you say. Uh, you know, this earth, uh, if everything came to an end today, there, there's still a lot that will happen here. Uh, if Jesus came today, then there's still uh, a thousand years of uh, millennium and there's seven years of tribulation uh, that will mark this earth before God destroys it. So there's a lot to happen yet. But one day, the Bible said, uh, Peter said, the elements will melt with a fervent heat and pass away with a great noise and God will make a new heaven and a new earth. So we're about to embark upon a new year, which is somewhat uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen in 2024, you know. Uh, a year that, uh, you know, we had anticipated that we thought would, uh, you know, everything would go our way. It may not be so. I can guarantee you one thing. You will face struggles in the coming year. Uh, and, but God is on our side. And because God is on our side, we will also be protected and guided, and God will give us uh, the things that we need in the coming year. So don't worry about that. Amen. David said, I have yet to see the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. 
And so God is going to take care of us. Amen. Now the Bible speaks of, uh, uh, you know, a couple of things. Uh, a wasted life. It speaks about eternal life. And I want us to see this juxtaposition here of, you know, the children of Israel entering, uh, uh, crossing Jordan, going to a place they'd never been before. And as we look into the future, uh, you know, maybe a thousand years from now, 2,000 years from now, a million years from now, whatever. I, I, it's going to happen, though, at some point in time. I, I don't know when Jesus is coming. I'm not a prophet, as Amos said, nor the son of a prophet. Uh, but I know that whatever God said in the Bible is true. Amen. It will come to pass. And so I look forward, uh, Brother Raymond, with that, uh, uh, with the binoculars uh, or the telescope of the scriptures and I see uh, in the future that one day we will enter a place that we have never been before and God could very well say to us you have not passed this way before the Bible says in Mark chapter 10 uh, and when he was gone forth into the way there came someone running and kneeled to him and asked him good master what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life Amen. Uh, and the, the Bible said Jesus told him, you know, the commandments. And, and he said, yes, I've kept all of those and so on. And Jesus said, all right, then uh, come and go and sell what you have and give it to the poor and take up your cross and follow me. Verse 22 said he was sad at that saying. And he went away grieved for he had great possessions. So he wasted his life. I, I would hate to come to my end and feel, feel like that I had wasted my life. You know, uh, uh, now I, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, accolades or degrees or, you know, things that people do that they stack up and think this is good and that's good. Uh, all those things may or may not be good. Uh, uh, but we could live a very fulfilled life and we could live a life for God uh, and yet not have the, uh, the things of this world uh, that they recognize. You know, when it comes my time, Brother Wesley, I want to look back and be able to say, you know, I think I have tried to do what God wanted me to do. Amen. That's satisfaction. Amen. Uh, as, uh, you know, we were talking, I was talking to Brenda there a while ago. She was talking about the, the little one saying, uh, after Christmas is over with, can we do it again? You know, that's when you know you've hit a home run. Uh, is when they've had that much joy. Or, or it could be like the little fellow I read about uh, who uh, he got up at, at 3 a.m. and he couldn't wait for Christmas to come. Everybody else was asleep. He's like three years old. He goes downstairs and he, uh, uh, he started unwrapping all the presents under the tree. He unwrapped everybody's presents. All of them. So when they came down, they didn't have any Christmas presents to unwrap. He had unwrapped them all. He, he just had a uh, a time now it would have been good to have a camera there uh, and see all of that, wouldn't it? You know, uh, well, and I want to ask you this morning as we look at this, uh, you know, uh, and see, we wonder what will life be like at this point in the future? A thousand, five thousand, a million years from now, whenever it happens, what will life be like? Well, the Bible speaks about a wasted life. It speaks about eternal life. Uh, John 10, 28 said, I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Who is able to pluck us out of the hands of the Lord? Amen. Uh, I, I, I've heard of folks who believe you can be lost again uh, and, and you know, you get saved and if you commit uh, you know, a, a sin that you can be lost again. If you happen to die before you repent, then you go to hell and all that. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't want that uh, kind of salvation because uh, uh, that's just a living torture. You know, fear had torment. But what will it be like? Well, it will be one, a life without sin. In verse 27 of Revelation 21, the Bible said, There shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If our name is not in the Lamb's book of life, then we're not going in. Amen. Sin is what will keep folks out of heaven. 
Now, I'm not talking about personal sin per se or numbering our sins. We all have them. We could all number them. Yours are probably different from mine, but we're all guilty. We're all guilty. Uh, uh, but listen, I Isaiah said uh, to one, uh, uh, probably God's highest uh, angel at one time, God said to him in Isaiah 14, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? For thou art cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation. Thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet, God said, thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Now, imagine that. This creature who was created perfect. And in fact, God said you was perfect in the day that I created thee. God talked in another place about uh, Lucifer, his uh, angelic name. He talked about him as uh, having uh, 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 his pipes, he said. His uh, body was a walking, living, breathing musical instrument. He was the minister of music. He led the worship services for God. That was his job, was to direct uh, the choirs and to direct the, uh, the, uh, the heavenly singing. That's one of the highest things uh, 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 that we can do is uh, lift our voices to heaven. This, a lot of people miss this, this is why music today has become so corrupt is because Satan is influencing the music industry. Satan knows music and he's influencing the music industry and uh, you know, we were having a conversation here about a week or so ago uh, about music. Go back and look at some of the songs from the past that maybe you uh, used to listen to uh, and pull up the lyrics for some of those songs and you'll find that they are not worshipful, they are not uh, God adoring, they are not lifting up the name of the Lord uh, uh, and uh, you know, the further we go down the road, the worse they get. And now we've got down to where music is just out and out, uh, you know, uh, 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 against uh, uh, the government, against uh, police, it's against, uh, you know, uh, the establishment, everything that's good. It's against uh, God, all of that, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I did a study, a brief study, uh, uh, looking at some musicians uh, and uh, all of this, and one, I didn't know her because I don't listen to that kind of music anymore, but I ran across it and she said, uh, uh, and uh, she was right, she was on the very edge of, uh, of fame. And she's pretty popular, had some albums out and, and had a good voice, I guess, and all that. She was in the middle of uh, the music industry and, and whatnot, and she talked about, you know, she had been raised in a Christian home, but she pushed that aside. She said, I actively rejected that because I wanted this uh, uh, fame and popularity and this money and all of that. Uh, and, and she talked about, uh, you know, getting to a place and meeting with music producers and, and all of that. Uh, uh, and she said they offered her uh, a deal. In fact, one of them said to call her aside into this room and said, look, you're right on the cusp. Are you ready to take the next step? You can be a superstar. Tomorrow, you can be a superstar and you can make money. You'll never have to worry about money again and you'll be famous all over the world. Uh, uh, and uh, that sounded exciting to her. She said, what must I do? And he said, you want the truth? Are you ready? And she said, yeah. And he said, you must uh, offer yourself to Satan. You must sell yourself to Satan. And she said, at that moment, all my uh, training as a child came back. And she said, uh, uh, that just seemed something that you know I could not do. And, and she, uh, her reaction told me a lot. She said, I didn't have time to respond and say yay or nay. She said, I fell on my knees and began to weep and say, God, what have I done? And she said, I began to cry out, God, help me. 
help me and get me out of this. And she said, I prayed and lifted my hands. And, and she said, when I got done praying, he was still sitting there. And he says, well, I see you made your decision. And he got up and left and her career was over with. But now she's talking about the Lord. She left that life. And she was very serious about it. I had to sell my soul to Satan, she said. I'm not doing that. Well, thank God for that. Listen, but the coming day, that new place we're going to cross into is going to be a life without sin. It's everywhere today. What caused the, uh, uh, you know, these people or persons or person to shoot this police officer and kill this police officer last night? Uh, sin. What causes uh, uh, war and aggression and, and destruction and all of these things in the world? It's sin. You know, somebody said, oh, if we get the right uh, leader, if we get the right person in office, if we do this or that, you know, we can get rid of all of our problems. No, the Bible said uh, that uh, uh, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The best that we can hope for is to have folks in uh, elected office who know what we know about God and will try to implement things that are pleasing to the Lord. But, you know, we're not in a Christian nation, truly. Uh, you know, we've been closer than uh, a lot of others, but truly uh, we, we've not been and we're not going to be until Jesus comes and rules the world. It's going to be a life without sin. Number two, let me move on. Revelation 22 said, and there shall be no night there. there. They shall need no candle, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So this new year, if you want to call it that, that we will enter, and it'll be a permanent year, a never-ending year. Uh, this new year that we go into with the Lord will be a, a year without darkness. Amen. Oh boy, I tell you, uh, it comes quickly now, you know, darkness. Uh, and, uh, you know, it just seems to creep up on us, particularly this time of year. It's like, uh, what, I think it gets dark at uh, 5.15 or something like that now. Uh, and and uh, I like the summertime when you stay outside at 9 o'clock and, and there's still some light. You know, I like that. Uh, but think about this time. There will be no, uh, uh, no night there. I guess the night is good uh, because we, uh, you know, we, we rest and all that. But listen, we, we won't need to sleep when we get there. We won't need night. Amen. We won't need that night. We will be eternally awakened and our bodies will be charged all the time. We won't have to recharge our, our body. We will be uh, perpetually living uh, for the Lord, have strength all the time. I don't know about you, uh, you know, I used to stay up a lot to one, two o'clock in the morning, and some, you know, uh, sometimes now I do, but uh, you know, they give me some pills to help with that, uh, 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 you know, to get me, but uh, to, to go to sleep. But but listen, uh, you know, when it comes uh, uh, nine o'clock now, I'm like, oh, okay, it's time to, you know. I talked to my brother a while back, and and uh, you know he's uh, a few years older than me, uh, and, and he said, "Man, when it gets by eight o'clock, I'm ready to go to bed." I'm like, "What? What are you talking about?" Uh, you know, uh, and, but that's the way it is. I, I mean, what happened? I, I, we used to stay up and watch TV together, and and uh, you know, talk into the uh, long hours of the night, talk about hunting and fishing and all those kind of things. And he's like, "No," nah. he said, uh, "You know." Uh, when it comes by 8 o'clock, uh, uh, my switch turns off and, you know, I'm ready to go to bed. That's what happened, you know. Uh, darkness comes. It's, it's going to be a life without darkness. The Bible talks about physical darkness. Uh, uh, Luke 18 said it came to pass that he was coming to Jericho, a certain man set by a blind man set by the wayside begging, uh, and he, uh, hearing the multitude pass by, asked by uh, what it meant. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Now, you know, I, I've never been in that position to not be able to see. I've talked to a, folks, a few folks who've lived without their sight. 
I've tried to imagine what it would be like. It'd be a hard thing to live without sight. But guess what? Everybody without Christ is blind. You know, we, we talk about the old movies, you know, uh, the zombies. And, and I guess here of late, it's the walking dead. You know, when you see these folks going around and, you know, uh, doing all this stuff. And I never have really got into that at all. It didn't make sense to me. I was like, no, I ain't watching that. Uh, but, but it even impacts children. Uh, Finn told me here uh, when they were here for Christmas, uh, he said, Papa, look at this. I said, what is that? He's had on his tablet. He said, those are zombies. I said, zombies? He said, yeah, those are zombies. He said, Papa, zombies will eat your brain. And I'm like, I'm like, boy, what are you watching? Quit watching that stuff. Uh, zombies will eat your brain. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, you know who the zombies really are? They're, they're out there today. You want to see some? Just, just go out in the world. They're, they're out there. They're, they're walking around. They, they can still walk and they can talk and they can eat and they breathe and, and they, uh, they go to work and they, they do all these things, but they're dead. They don't have Christ. They are the walking dead. But there's coming a day in this world, there'll be life without death. The Bible speaks of the death of the righteous, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, we don't think about death in those terms, but that's what God said. In fact, uh, uh, Brother Grover had that put on his tombstone. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. And then it speaks about the death of the, sin the sinner. The Bible said in Luke 16, the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell being in torments. Now, that's a thought that people don't like to deal with today. And a lot of folks are you know, totally uh, put off by that. But that's what the Bible says, man. The rich man was in hell. Didn't mention purgatory. Didn't mention he was in a stasis or in a place where he was trying to work his way out or someone could pay the debt for him. He, he wasn't like being in jail waiting on somebody to go his bail. He was in hell. And without God, if we die without God, that's where we're going. I've told you this before. I witnessed a man who was dying, who had rejected God and cursed me to my face and told me to get out of his room and he cursed God and told me he didn't want my God, he didn't want my salvation, he didn't want anything to do with me. But they called me back when he was uh, uh, dying and I went to his room and as he was dying, I tried to talk to him because I thought maybe I can share something with him and all he could say was I'm dying, I'm going to hell, my feet are burning, pull my feet out of the fire. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm going to hell. And that's the way he died. Now, a dying man has no reason to lie or to put on a show. Do I believe it was real? I sure do. As far as I know, that man went to hell. And listen, beloved, that haunts me to this day. Uh, hearing that man's voice in my head, thinking, was there something else I could have done? But I couldn't do anything. He, he was in a place where he couldn't hear me except he wanted me to pull his feet out of the fire. Life without death. I hate death. I told somebody that a while back. You know, we, were, we had been at a funeral and... Uh, you know, sitting there, and, and I said, you know what, I hate death because it causes so much pain and suffering, amen, and people carry that weight with them. I, I hate death, but there's coming a day when uh, there will be no more death. There's coming a day uh, in God's new year when there will be a life without suffering. World full of suffering today, if you don't believe it, uh, just go over to the Middle East and see the folks over there. Go over to the Ukraine, see the folks over there. Uh, there are other places where folks are suffering, you know, folks without food and shelter and all of these things. Uh, uh, those are the things, uh, you know, it, it just boggles my mind uh, that if we can give uh, tens and hundreds of billions of dollars for weapon systems to kill folks, uh, how come we can't give uh, money to get food to feed folks? 
or to provide medical care for folks who don't have it, particularly in this country. You know, I heard recently uh, some of these folks, I, I saw a video uh, the other day, uh, literally people coming across the border and it was thousands, thousands lined up racing across the southern border. And somebody said when they were coming across, I hadn't validated this, but kind of uh, uh, have respect for the person that said it, uh, that when they come across that they were giving them uh, uh, a plane ticket to anywhere they wanted in the United States. And they were giving them a, a, a card uh, that had $5,000 on it, you know. Well, listen, there, there, are, uh, 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 there are people, there are people that I know of right now that are living on a fixed income and, and they have to make a decision whether they are going to buy their food or their medication that month. We live in the richest nation in the world. Amen? Listen, uh, you say, preacher, that doesn't happen. I know folks right now, uh, uh, some elderly folks who've had heart attacks in one thing and another, and they are on, uh, uh, you know, the blood thinners, the new stuff. Uh, uh, they use Eloquist and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, you uh, if you don't have commercial insurance, you have to buy it yourself. Well, guess what? You're looking at $1,000 a bottle. The, the diabetic medicine that I have to take uh, because I'm on Medicare and not commercial insurance, I can't get help. They won't give me one of those cards that says uh, you can have this for free. I have to, I would have to pay for it. And, and so uh, I, I said, well, how much is it? And they said, it's $1,100 a bottle. Uh, and you take uh, one bottle last one month. I said, I can't do that, doc. You know, and and, uh, and he said, well, maybe there's a way. And, and, and I finally found a way by calling the drug company and talking with them and, and got help. Thank God for that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, because uh, uh, without that, you know, be no way. Listen, you say, preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying we live in the richest nation in the world, but we don't take care of our own. <coughs> Amen. People are suffering. But one day there's coming a place, a, a day where there'll be no suffering. And then let me quit with this. The Bible said one day there'll be uh, in the new earth, in, in God's new uh, year, there'll be a life without a curse. Genesis chapter 3, ladies, you'll identify with this. Under the woman, he said, I'll greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now, we, we got ladies today. Uh, you know, that are unhappy with the way God did things. And, you know, there, there has to be order. And, uh, you know, the, the male-female relationship is two sides of the same coin. And for whatever reason, God, uh, you know, put the man at the head and he put the woman as his helpmate. Uh, and uh, he chose to, uh, women to bear children, not the men. Probably a good thing because uh, if uh, they're waiting on me to have children, there wouldn't be no children. Not after what I've seen. You know, you know. My wife told me when she was in labor, if you tell me to breathe one more time, I'm going to smack your teeth out. You know, <laughs> uh, because she was in pain. I heard some of the ladies and they used to have the rooms where you know they'd have four or five. Uh, rooms and women were waiting there to go to delivery and they were getting ready to that stage and man, I tell you what uh, you talk about being in a torture chamber hearing those ladies uh, screaming and uh, you know and all that I'm like I can't wait to get out of here uh, either Lord send them on to delivery and get it over with or get me out of here one uh, because it was, uh, it was a terrible thing you know uh, and, and so uh, they got my respect they do but, but that's so you say, why did God do that? Because uh, Eve disobeyed God. So ladies, if you want somebody to thank for the things that you have to deal with as a woman, uh, bearing children and menopause and all that stuff, if you want to thank somebody for that, thank Mother Eve. She did that to you. Amen. There's a curse on women, but one day it's going to be lifted. Amen. But there's a curse on man, too. The Bible said to Adam, he said, Because thou hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. In other words, Adam, you are going to work, 
and the soil is not going to be conducive to ease. It's going to make it hard on you and you're going to have to deal with aphids and, and bed bugs and all kinds of uh, creepy crawlers and cut worms and all that kind of stuff. And you're going to have to deal with that in order to try to get some food out for your family. Why? Because you disobeyed. And are we still living through that? We are. Earth has a curse. Amen. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face. You know, some people say in the sweat of your brow, but God said in the sweat of your face thou shalt eat bread till thou return to the ground, for out of it thou was taken. For dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return. And we say that sometimes, you know, at a funeral, uh, at the grave. For dust thou art, and dust thou shalt return. In God's new year, it'll be a life without a curse. Amen. Well, I hope you got something out of the message today. And uh, we are going to have a closing prayer. Let's stand to our feet. And as we pray, I would invite anybody who would like to, uh, to come and join me here up front. And uh, we are going to uh, have a closing prayer for year, the year 2023. And we're going to thank God for what he did in 2023, and we're going to ask for his guidance in 2024. So if you would like to do that, come. If you can't do that, you can stay right where you are, uh, and uh, uh, God will bless you anyway. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's Father. We do thank you, Lord, for your blessings uh, this year you have given us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a good 2023. Thank you for this church and all the people that make it up. Thank you, Lord, for uh, every message that's been preached, every song that's been sung here this year. Thank you for all the good fellowship we've had. And, uh, Lord, as we uh, look back on this year that we've uh, come out of and we look forward to the new year, uh, uh, God willing, uh, we pray that you would guide us as we go into this new year. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you might uh, help us every day, that we might uh, put you first. Lord, that we might live a life that would be uh, uh, totally uh, uh, consistent with what you would have us to live. I pray, Lord, that you might uh, uh, have the great Holy Spirit uh, be with us, guide us, lead us, and teach us the things that we should do. I pray, Lord, that this uh, year might be a great year. That you bless this church according to your will. Not only this church, but everywhere the word is being preached. I pray you'd bless uh, your men uh, uh, that preach the word and bless the congregations. I know there's some that uh, uh, there's a great falling away. And I pray, God, you might uh, stabilize these things. Help us, God, in these times. And, Lord, may the, uh, uh, the great Holy Spirit be with us. and. I lead God and direct us. I pray for the lost that you'd speak to their heart, uh, that they may be saved before it's eternally too late. Uh, thank you now for all your blessings, and we'll love you and praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray, amen.